any party that just tries to purge members that might have any sort of independent thinking, I think eventually will run itself into uh, very much of a minority status. That was Republican Didi Skosafava speaking with Rachel after falling victim to an ideological purge in her New York congressional race this year. A purge that is now reaching into the heart of the Republican Party. Ten members of the Republican National Committee are distributing a purity principle proposal to be voted on by party members early next year. Among its premises are, quote, Republican solidarity in opposition to Obama's socialist agenda and President Reagan's belief that someone who agreed with him eight out of ten times was his friend, not his opponent. The resolution proposes that in order to qualify for funding for the Republic, from the Republican National Committee, candidates must sign on to no fewer than eight of the ten principles, including things like opposing climate change legislation, opposing gun control, opposing immigration reform, opposing gay marriage, and supporting lower taxes. A litmus test that, as Keith has pointed out on Countdown, not even Ronald Reagan himself would have passed. Big tent, meet pup tent. Joining us now is Democratic strategist Chris Kafinas. Chris, thanks very much for having Good us evening. on. Good for having evening. Me on, for having you on. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so used to being the guest here. Back in the spring, Michael Steele denied that Rush Limbaugh was the de facto leader of the Republican Party. He called Limbaugh's language incendiary and ugly and then, of course, apologized the next day. Now you have the party considering adopting a resolution that it calls Obama's agenda socialist. What changed between the Michael Steele then and the Michael Steele now? Well, I, I think to put it bluntly, they're, they're terrified of their grassroots. And I think what they're misunderstanding is those grassroots are leading them down a path that's going to make them more and more unelectable. I mean, you cannot have a party that has a litmus test that does not reflect either the reality or the, the, the policies that the country cares about. I mean, when you go through the, the list of them, it's, it just reinforces the notion that this is a party of no. But this, I think, is a bigger problem for Steele and a bigger problem for the Republican Party as they try to figure out, you know, how they put themselves in the strongest position for 2010. If they simply go down this road, what they're not going to do is not simply just lose candidates. They're going to alienate voters. And just in terms of candidates, look at, for example, in places like Illinois and Delaware, where two of the Republican candidates wouldn't meet this test. It is illogical, if not downright stupid, to be blunt about it. Chris, special interest groups do this kind of stuff all the time. They give political candidates candidates questionnaires and they rate them and they endorse them and 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 based on those answers is is that what the Republican Party is doing well they, they seem to be mirroring that the, the the problem with this it's not interest groups which are you know both sides of the ideological or all sides of the ideological spectrum you know the parties or interest groups will do this the difference here is a party basically saying who can be part of the Republican Party and the logic part about this is listen it's simple politics I don't have to tell you governor you have to figure out a way to appeal to a wide swath of voters not just mobilize your base but figure out how to appeal to independents and moderates and bring those people over who may not be agreeing with every part of your ideological agenda. Their problem is they want people to subscribe to their ideological agenda, and they don't understand. They seem to not understand politics. You have to reflect what voters want and think. You can't simply impose your beliefs. And again, it just shows, I think, how radical the Republican grassroots have gotten. So, so a race like District 23 in upstate New York, where Doug Hoffman was a conservative party candidate, uh, Didi uh, Skosavava didn't meet the purity test, and so they ran her out of the race, the Republican uh, right wing did. Uh, most of the presidential candidates that are talked about in 2012 came in and helped run the Republican out of the race. The conservative lost, conceded, unconceded, conceded again, unconceded, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Do the Republicans think this is a win for them? You, you, you would think that they would realize by what they did in the in the 23rd district that it wouldn't be a winning strategy. But in a strange, I think, twist of events, it actually has emboldened them. They actually think what happened in New York 23 is a victory. They actually think what's happening, for example, in Florida, where they're getting behind Rubio versus Christ, is a is a victory. And again, I think it just shows how radicalized and how you know uh, fervent uh, the, uh, the the right wing base is getting to basically 
basically take controls of the Republican Party. And this is going to become a real problem for Michael Steele and the Republican leadership. How do you appeal to moderates if basically you're unwilling to tell your base that they don't reflect what moderates or what most voters think? It really is not a recipe for electoral success. And I think this is where Democrats, I think, have a real opening, that we can come out and say, yeah, we have some tough issues, but we're addressing them. They, meaning the Republicans, simply have an ideological radical agenda that doesn't reflect your beliefs or your agenda. Democratic strategist Chris Kofinas, thanks so much for joining us this evening. We hope to see maybe Rachel have Chairman Limbaugh on next week. Thanks very much. Come